the shelf to tell me when to change the video. Okay, it's easy to search for it and split it up, video editing by doing that. Um, we're going to now look at a formula. Okay, so we were saying up here, um, we had the, the quick recap of level 2. We've looked at that extra detail of path difference in more detail, I think, than we've done at level 2. Now we're going to look at formula. Um, and we're actually going to find this, this awful messy diagram that we have here, we're going to tidy that up somewhat um, by using um, just some, some more high level maths and some cool stuff from level 3. So I'm going to pause it and just sketch a diagram on here and then I'll explain it. Okay, so what we've got here um, on the right hand side is a screen. We've got two sources again, S1 and S2. We've got a central line that's running down there. It's just a reference line so that we can get the angle um, for which, if you're coming out from the central point um, to where this thing here is a bright fringe, so um, that would be like a um, point of constructive interference, an anti-node, um, and it's easy to consider this as laser light or something coming through a, um, a double slit. So laser light coming from this side, double slit here. The spacing of those two slits is quite important. Let's write that. So um, this is what we would call a D, just D, the distance of separation, and usually that's like um, tenths or hundredths of a millimeter. It's a very small um, distance. Um, you can sometimes notice with the naked eye that there is more than one gap. That's that's how small it is. It's it's getting down to the resolution of what you can see, um, and. Uh, what else is important? Oh yes, we haven't drawn in the two beams of light. We're going to consider green laser light because it's the colour I've got set up already. And the green laser light hits the um, the 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 um, I forgot, the double slit. Okay, could be a piece of photographic film. Uh, you don't know what photographic film is these days, but um, it's basically a pathway that's got um, two gaps in it, and you've got the light coming in this way. It hits, and some of the light goes through here, and some goes through here, and it radiates outwards according to that pattern that we had. And where they cross over, you get interference and all sorts of going. Okay, you know what it is. You can imagine it now. Um, so I'm going to try and sketch these lines in really carefully, and this is going to illustrate the path difference concept. So there is one line. Let's draw an arrow on it so we can see. So this is showing the direction of those wave fronts passing through. And we've got another one coming from down the bottom here. Boom. Okay. A little bit rough, but you get the idea. So the triangle, the black triangle behind, is just giving us a reference point uh, and an easy way to measure the angle. And we're actually going to have another little triangle, um, which we're going to use here. So remember that we're behind all of this is the concept of path difference. It's quite important to how we understand this. And we're really interested in the path difference between uh, path 1 and path 2. So if you start from uh, this end where it's made the bright fringe and you backtrack both paths are going to be exactly the same length up until about this line here. Okay, I'm going to draw, uh, draw a little line across there to show you where they are. So until that point both paths are the same length. Okay, And what we're really interested in is that short length there we go, that short length there, okay, and that is our path difference. And you may notice if you've read ahead or if you're um, just watching carefully that we've got a little triangle, a little right angled triangle formed here. And um, we've got a PD, the path difference is one side of it, just here. And this angle theta, this is why it's quite useful to have that large triangle because you can measure the angle easily, is going to be the same as this angle theta here according to geometry. You can have a little play around with that and, and work out in your own mind why um, the video has already gone way too long so we need to get on with it from here. So um, that gives us, as, and combined with D, the distance of separation, that gives us a lot of information for developing a formula um, to put all this together. So what I'm going to do, do is I'm just going to explode out this, um, this triangle here um, a little bit further down and we're going to use it to, to find an equation for path difference. So here it is here, and there. So remember, d is the distance of separation, theta is the angle um, between 
uh, that fringe that we're looking at. In fact, it doesn't have to be the first bright fringe, but that's going to come into it a little bit later as well. And we've got the path difference. So if we're actually just writing a formula for the path difference, um, the path, uh, path difference is going to be d sine theta. So the path difference is going to be d sine theta, and you can assure yourself that's just purely from this um, formula here. We also have the information um, earlier that uh, the path difference is equal to n lambda, or the path difference is equal to n minus half lambda for those uh, destructive interference points. But we, we can also do a little bit more, just a little bit more. If we go back up to... Um, to our black triangle there, we've got L, the length uh, of, or the distance away from the screen that the source is, so between here and here. And we've got X, as I said, was the, um, the, the, the distance of this particular fringe. Okay, it could, we don't know what N value is, we've just picked an arbitrary fringe. You'd have to count them to find the N value. But um, from this, we can see that uh, tan theta equals, uh, let's see, adjacent over, toa, opposite over adjacent, so that's x over l, so tan theta equals x over l, um, and I, I don't like doing these, but they happen to be quite useful, um, we can now do uh, one of our small angle approximations, so for uh, small, small angles of theta, um, tan theta is equal to, or approximately equal to, uh, sine theta, so we can we can kind of eliminate this part of the term, and what we'll end up with um, is <coughs> excuse me um, is that uh, the path difference p d equals d x over l. Okay, and then um, so remember remember that small angle approximation though. Okay, that's really really vital. That means the distance L here has to be really, really big compared to that X distance that it was. Okay, if that X distance is, um, is, is like about the same order of magnitude as L, then your angle is not going to be small enough and you can't use this. So that's one of the tricks some of the questions will expect you to remember that small angle approximation and when you can and can't use um, this version of the formula. Okay, and I also alluded earlier to um, the uh, path difference equals n lambda. Um, so you can re reshuffle this formula n lambda equals dx over l. You can just cut out the middle bit and then you've got a nice useful formula. And this video, as I said, has gone way too long, but I'll just um, also add that's for, um, for the bright fringes, for the constructive interference, so n lambda equals dx over l, and you can also have a, a version for the um, the non-bright fringes, or the dark fringes, or the destructive interference, and that is n minus half lambda equals dx over l, over l, okay. Um, rushing a little bit more at the end, um, remembering that your n value is they go from zero from the center out to one, two, three, one, two, three, and so forth in either direction. But it always starts at zero at the center and moves outwards. Um, so a lot of questions will ask how many bright fringes will there be at a particular angle and um, or at a particular distance, um, and you have to work out the angle um, if it's if it's small angle approximation applies. Um, otherwise they might just be interested in a distance or a wavelength or a length measurement. Um, very often they want to work out the wavelength of light. So they'll have a whole setup with known factors and then they'll just get you to rearrange the formula for this to find the wavelength of the light. Um, which is particularly cool uh, that this kind of abstract concept of wavelength of light can be, can be worked out uh, from a, a, and it's, if you like, on the micro scale, it's obviously on the nano scale, because it's nanometers, but, um, or first decimal place for micrometers, but the, um, uh, but, but you, you can do a macro measurement, so measurement involving things on a visible uh, uh, centimeters, meters scale, to actually bring it right back down 
to find things that are on the micrometer scale, nanometer scale, which I think is very cool. I think that's one of the um, powerful things of this physics. And the people that came up with this theory are just pretty amazing, really. Um, so anyway, that's that's the long version of interference in more detail. Um, hopefully it's not too long for you to go back and revise um, if you missed any of the details. Well, as always, I suggest you combine these information uh, videos with some questions from um, past exam papers, uh, from textbooks, from revision guides, and um, all that kind of stuff. Um, I may at some point be including a section of the site that includes um, those things. But There we go. All the best. Thanks for watching this on the Physics Lounge.